Hello, good afternoon. Casey Durango here of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I, I have lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Um, I'm going to jump right on in. And thank you to those of you who are here. And, and somebody uh, let me know that you can see and hear me because it's always a wonder. It's always a question. I've found myself just chattering on before and realizing that the connection has been lost. Great. Keto Jen Nick says yes. Thank you, Jen. Okay. My nose is, my nose is itchy. Excuse me. Live television. Today's topic, as the title in the thumbnail said, is whom to believe. There is so much noise out there about the ketogenic protocol. I mean, it's everywhere. Companies that have been in the diet business for years are now glomming onto the phrase keto. I'm thinking Slim Fast, Atkins. Of course, Atkins, the original Atkins was low carb. The Atkins products now are owned by, I think, Nestle. So <laughs> we have to be careful. What made me think about this was I was, I was having you know, a little news feed and I, I tried to be very, very careful about what I'm reading news because I, I don't want my anxiety to go like this. But there was one and it's from, um, I, I pulled it up. It's from, it, it says, eat this, not that. I think that's a series that was in men's health. And I don't know if that still is where this originates. But the, the uh, topic is, now, and I'm putting myself in the place of someone who's, you know, just starting out or asking questions or wondering how to do this. The, the title of the article is 20 Carb Eating Habits That Are Ruining Your Weight Loss Effort. So that's a real grabber right there, right? So I said, I'm curious. I have to confess, I usually don't read articles like this because uh, they just make me roll my eyes and shake my head. My husband, my lovely mate said, Jenny, you really should read these things because other people are reading them and may be confused. You should know what's out there. And I thought, well, let's, I'll take his advice. He usually gives me good counsel. So the first, the first problem they say is, they write is, I have to put my glasses on to read this. First problem, the first, the first problem that's ruining your weight loss on low carb is this, you go low carb. That sounds like a problem. Um, it, first thing, Spanish researchers found that eating a low carb, high protein diet can cause weight gain in the long term. Their findings revealed that those who follow high protein diets have a 90% greater risk of gaining more than 10% of their body weight over time. And those who don't scarf meat and the, then those who don't scarf meat. Simply put, you need carbs to burn body fat. They are fuel, meaning carbs. You need that fuel so that you can have an awesome metabolism. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Not the whole thing. Simply put, you need carbs to burn body fat. They are fuel and you need that fuel to rev up your metabolism. Is anyone else here rolling your eyes and shaking your head? Or maybe one of these. Could, someone needs to slap one of those emojis up here. So no wonder people are confused. Why would they write that? And what, where's the study? Cite the study that Spanish researchers found that so-and-so and so-and-so. Cite the study. And it's the absence of carbs that turns us into fat burners. If eating carbs made us burn fat, we'd all be see-through, right? Because that's what we did for decades. We ate all the carbs. And listen where they put it. They, you know, they put on... Um, those who, those who don't do better than those who scarf meat. That, that's a really scholarly article. Scarfing meat. 
And by the way, this is not a high protein diet. It's a moderate protein diet. I don't scarf meat. I don't scarf anything anymore. I used to scarf. I scarfed carbs. And I was really fat. So, and that's, you know, that's a, it's, it's on, it's in the news feed. And then it goes on to say the other things. Uh, what was the other thing? I, I, you know, after that first one, it's like, okay, this is a, this is a crap article. It's just wrong on the face of it. And it's poorly written. So what is one to do? To whom should we listen? First of all, we should listen to our own bodies. I've heard from people who have started the ketogenic protocol that they've done really well. Their weight is coming down. Their joints feel better. They're able to come off of some medications themselves. You know, they don't, they realize they don't need their migraine medication so often. They don't need their asthma inhaler. They feel great. And then an article comes out that the ketogenic diet is quite dangerous and not sustainable or whatever it might be. And, the, and they get knocked off their own progress. We should not be listening. We are adults. I'm going to assume anyone here listening to my voice is an adult, at least old enough to get into YouTube. We need to make our own decisions and quit waiting to be told by everybody what to do, how much to eat, when to eat, micromanaging our grams of everything and our milliliters of water. And this non-sugar sweetener and that non-sugar sweetener and don't do this and do that. And you know, what a what a brazen title for a series. Eat this, not that. Well, I say, eat that, not this. Eat the, scarf some meat, why don't you? For those of you who don't know what the ketogenic protocol is, keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day, total carbs, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein and full fat dairy and limited amounts. Non-starchy vegetables, also limited. If you want to say, if it's not on page four, link below, don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. And stop when you're satiated. If I was going to write an article on the top 10 things you're doing to ruin your weight loss effort on a low-carb diet is one thing, you're not, you're not low-carb. You know, we, we go in and out. To some, some people say, oh, I just, I'm 90% of the time I'm there. And if that works for you, great. But if the next, the next phrase out of your mouth is, you know, I'm, I'm strict keto 90% of the time, I just don't seem to be losing any weight. Okay, let's think about that. Because for those of us who are like me, and frankly, almost everyone is like me, I am the every person. You know, there are 10% of the population on either end, you know, for everything in life. Intelligence, kindness, creativity, perfect pitch, whatever. 10% of the people, no, I say 10, a percentage of the population can eat whatever they want, do whatever they want, live to be 103 and die on the ski slopes. Perfectly healthy and happy and, you know, could have lived forever. Then there's a subset of the population that really, really struggles, has unique situations. But for almost everybody, they're like me. I can't screen share. One of these days, I'm going to try to up my game as far as live streaming and doing it through a, a um, through my Canon DSLR, but that requires a, me learning a lot more. And I would be able to screen share, but you can go to my blog and you can see my before photos. I was morbidly obese for 30 years, from my mid twenties to my mid fifties. What was I going to say? I can't remember. I had a train of thought and then it went, 
right out in my head. So who do you listen to? How do you figure it out? For me, my personal experience, I had given up on losing weight. I did not want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, which I knew was next for me. I Googled how to not take in how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University. And when I say to whom do you listen, I listen to that guy. I didn't know him from Adam. Now we're we're friends. I didn't know him. I just, you know. His message made sense. It was simple. It was not trying to sell me anything. He was not looking into the camera. He was talking to his patients. Uh, uh, an intern or grad student of his had stuck the camera in the corner of his weekly Monday clinic session. That voice spoke to me and the message made sense. I knew low carb work for me since 1977, but I was ready to hear the message at that point from that person. So then you start l listening. Now I will tell you, I was fortunate. I've been doing this for six and a half years. So there was not as much noise out there as there is now. As a matter of fact, at the time it was called, Dr. Westman called it no starch, no sugar. And other parts of the country, uh, world, call it LCHF, low carb, high fat. It's not really high fat in that you pile on fat. It's only high fat in that it's not low fat. So, so I heard other, you know, kind of YouTube suggested lectures to me and Dr. Stephen Finney, Dr. Jeff Bolick, a couple of others came up. They were not trying to sell me anything, and they were talking about how and why this works. Now you can find people who are trying to sell you a lot of things. I have a micro mini slice of exposure in this compared to other people. As I've often said, there are, there are whales in the ocean, and there are big fishes in little ponds. I'm a guppy in a teacup. I'm a nobody. And even I, at least once a week, I'm approached about love your content. We'd love for you to be an affiliate for our cookies. Mm, you do not know my content. The next, the one I just got one this morning, keto diet pills. Okay, so anybody that has a presence can go ahead and get these affiliate links and start sell selling a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. I will sell you a t-shirt all day long. This one is, I can and I will, I see an IW. Link below to my Teespring shop. You don't need a t-shirt or a mug. You don't need the food list. By the way, don't get snarky about Dr. Westman and the 9.95 or whatever it is for the food list. He gave it away for 20 years. People scrambled, bastardized it, reposted it, called it page four, put things on there that aren't true. And every penny he gets goes to funding research, grants, small studies, because it's difficult to get anybody else to fund a, a, a ketogenic study. And it's hard. So, anywho, but you don't need to buy it. Just eat fatty sources of protein, non-starchy vegetables, leafy greens. You don't need to buy a meal plan. My problem with buying meal plans, and my, my lovely mate suggested that I produce meal plans, even just to give them away. No, nope, because you know that, what that's doing. If someone says, here are, you know, here are three meal options for every meal, three meals a day for a week, then it kind of puts the idea, oh, I need to be eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks. You know, no, don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Why would eat this don't, not that, that article that I just read the first thing from, why would they say that? Why would they write that? It's not based in science. Could it be based in advertising? Could it be that there's a whole lot more money to be made in food products that are prepackaged and shelf stable and full of carbs than there is in, say, selling eggs? Oh, by the way, look at my, look at her eggs. Girls are doing well. So be careful of, of the messenger. If the message makes you go, hmm, I don't think that's right. If your gut 
you should pardon the expression, tells you that doesn't seem right, trust your instinct. The protocol, keep your carbs low, don't eat if you're not hungry, stop when you're satiated. That's it. I've been doing this for six and a half years. I have not put on 10% of my body weight. I have lost, I won't tell you the percentage because people can do math and I don't want my husband to know how much I actually ever weighed. I, I jokingly say he can do math and I'm afraid he will, if he figures out how much I weighed at my heaviest, he will retroactively leave me. But of course that's silly. He has eyeballs and hands. What was I going to say? So I did not put on 10% of my body weight. I lost a whole bunch. I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off of my heaviest weight. 97.4 from January 18th, 2004, excuse me, January 8th, 2014, which is when I saw the white coat video. I bet you there are people here who can name the day that they started a conscientious ketogenic diet. I bet you, you know, raise your hand. You know, they can just rattle it off. It's like a birthday, which by the way, you don't need cake to celebrate a birthday. Some people post pictures of like a steak with a candle in it. That's their birthday. Some find a voice that speaks to you. Not, mine may not. My experience may not help you. But I am like everybody. I'm... I'm a very normal person. I am not a special snowflake. But find a voice that speaks to you. Some people are more like drill sergeants. And if that, if you respond to that, great. Some people are like class clowns. If you respond to that, great. Some people are just, just the science. I'm just going to talk about the science. If, that, if you respond to that, great. And sometimes it could be a mixture. But keep in mind, this is dead simple. Not to say easy, but it's dead simple. Keep your carbs low, 20 grams or fewer a day, total not net. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. If someone wants it to be more complicated so they can sell you something to make it easier, that's another thing that makes you go, hmm, just be careful. That's all. If, if you like buying products, great. Some people, you know, think if there's not commerce involved, it can't be a real thing. That's great. I'm frugal. Very frugal. By the way, how's my lighting today? Speaking of frugal, my husband made me this light. Because lighting is difficult in my house. Is it okay? Good. Oh, make sure it's not okay. Let's turn to comments and questions. Share your experience and your thoughts and your feedback. Now, my my light, I found this out in a patron-only live stream. The first time I used it, looks, look what happens. <laughs> oh, gee. So I have to be careful. By, by the way, there are patrons here. I want to give a plug to Patreon. I have a private Patreon support group. I've often said I believe patrons join it not to get access to me, but to get access to each other. I do a 20 short videos a month about... 10, 15 minutes long each one from my kitchen counter, first thing in the morning. Um, I have about five patron-only live streams through Crowdcast a month, about five patron-only Zoom video group sessions a month, and monthly one-on-ones with me, plus patron discounts and stuff. But for things like swag or Dr. Westman's Keto Retreat, I'll try to remember to put a link there. So anyway, so I'll... I look funny with my glasses so you don't get blown out. Hey, Helena. Great. Thank you, Helena. A oh, patron. I'm so glad to see you. Hey, Gray's Custom Trim. The food industry would never have a study show that low-carb living is a good idea. Why? Because they are about profits, not people. Hell, any keto processed food is BS. Thank you, Gray. And Gray, Gray's Custom Trim knows of where he speaks. If you're comfortable doing so, Gray, please share your experience. 
Brenda Hamilton, April 30th, 2018. That's my birthday, April 30th. Never too old to, to get smart. That's a good one. You know, my, my one of my favorite quotes, and it was actually on my station, my Go Kid with Casey stationery when I first started. It's from George Eliot, the pen name of um, Marianne Evans. It's never too late to be who you might have been, ever. And there are people in their 70s, 80s, and my favorite is Marie in her 90s, who made a change to her life. Mary T writes, no more pain, no more thyroid meds. Younger still, 62, than I was at 40. Down 60 pounds, keto every day. That's it. Hello from Cleveland, Ohio, writes Ann Taylor. How long from your start did you drop under a diabetic level? Are you asking me? I was not formally diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I had high blood sugar, and I, and I knew that the next, the next checkup, that was going to be the conversation. Plus, I'm, I come from a, a large family. I'm near the end of them, six of seven children. Everybody had blood sugar issues. You know, people were dying of metabolic issues in my family. And the brother closest to me in age had just gotten diagnosed. And I knew I was next. He was older than, than I. He is older than I. And I knew I was next. And like I said, I'd given up on losing weight. My average, I took my glucose this morning for some reason. What was it? I don't do it every day. I don't need to. It's like I don't take my temperature every day. I, you know, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. What was that? I can't remember. It was 72. That's pretty much my average. Sometimes I'll be in the 60s. Sometimes I'll be in the 80s. Very rarely will I be in the 90s. Um, oh, I know why. The, the, the scale has fluctuated. It could be the humidity. I, I just didn't feel as great. I have not felt as peckish. I just think I ate more food than I needed over the last day or so. And that happens. Jonesboro Rep, a member of Go Keto with Casey YouTube Club. Thank you so much. You can see because name is in green and there's a little avocado. I put that little emoji there. November 1st, 2019, the day they started. Okay. Linda Nelson writes, from Brooksville, Florida, back on keto after a year of being non-keto. Now at 80, trying again for six weeks. July 6th, 2020. Don't go. You know, when people go off, I'm wondering, other than, and we do hear this, you know, stress or a loved one passed. Or, and of course, not to be harsh. Eating carbs never brought anyone back to life. Seriously. Eating carbs never repaired a damaged relationship. Sometimes it makes it worse. Eating carbs never stalled a bankruptcy or prevented our carburetor from breaking. Eating carbs doesn't really do anything for us. It is not essential, regardless of what that article said, you don't, <laughs> you must eat carbs to lose, burn fat. What? It is not the presence of the fat that burns fat. It's the absence of the carbs that turns us into fat burners. That's just, again, see, this is why I don't like to read those articles. It just irritate the heck out of me. Okay. Gray must have shared. Hey, Trish, another patron. Casey, thanks for all for the we don't need three meals a day and snacks comment. Getting over that was a struggle for me and the people selling meal plans, carb tracking, etc., still promote that idea. Of course they do. I'm sorry, I, I keep buzzing. I just wanna make sure that, and you know, cause these days you wanna make sure you don't miss a message from a loved one. So things are buzzing around me. So Gray's custom trim down, listen to this guys down 272.4 pounds since April 15th, 2019. Feel a real food only, under 20 grams, total, not net. Why is that, people ask? Why is it total, not net? Because net carbs is just eating more carbs. Here's a clue. Food manufacturers tout their carb count, but they say net carbs. If you look at the label, 
Seriously, it might have 25 grams of carbohydrate. And they say seven carbs because they're factoring out grams of fiber or sugar alcohols or something, which that's not, there's no good science behind that. And also there's no such thing as keto ice cream and halo ice cream. I know they need to sell a product, but encouraging people that don't should yourself anymore. Don't say I should pass on dessert. I should, you know, they want to sell ice cream and it's not keto ice cream. There's no such thing. Why is there no such thing? Because to make ice cream, you must use cream and cream per the protocol is limited to two tablespoons a day. So I ask you, how much ice cream are you going to make from two tablespoons of cream? There. I guess, I guess Halo will not be reaching out to me to be a sponsor. Hey, Colin, I have missed you. Colin, you know, you're totally entitled to the patron only live streams. I, you need to change your tier. You need to go into your profile and, and get on the right tier. Your pledge is not your tier. Your pledge is your pledge and your tier should match your pledge, but yours doesn't. Hey, Nancy, just ordered a pant size that I haven't worn since I was a teenager. 70 years old now, happy with how I feel. That might be, let me tell you what, personally, feeling good about myself is the ultimate thing. I Because I spent decades not feeling good about myself. Great life. Wonderful husband, high achieving, independent children. They're so independent that the next time there's an entire family get together, it might be when one of the, for a funeral and one of us won't be able to enjoy it. But anyway, they're great. They're independent. I've been successful in my, I was successful in my former career. I was unhappy with myself. And to now be content with myself, other than I call myself an idiot about 15 times a day. But, you know, I need to work on that because I'm not an idiot. Hey, Doris, another patron. Keeping me on track. Thanks, Casey. Loving your daily little chats is very helpful for me. Thank you. They're helpful for me. Helpful for me. I appreciate you saying that. Susan Rapp says, Right. Started May 1st, 2020. I was never diagnosed with prediabetes, but my blood sugars were around 95 to 105 fasting. Now I average 79 to 85, losing weight and feel amazing. Congratulations. And you, hey, Tennessee thrifter, how you doing? Been a while. Celebrating four years of keeping 73 pounds off. I found keto the exact same way you did with the white coat video. I am weight stable and happily wearing size six to eight when I was a 16, 18. For those of you who don't know, I started out at a 24W. The jeans at Costco. And they didn't get any bigger than that. Now I've I bought my way all the way down through the options at Costco. And they don't, I, the last pair I bought was the smallest size they had at the time, six. I don't buy my clothes at Costco anymore. I, uh, it's, I really love Stitch Fix. I love it so much I became a, I bought stock in it. But one of the things about feeling better is you, you know, I dress, I did the bag lady look to death. It's horrifying to go clothes shopping when you're a big person, at least it was for me. Some people revel in their bodies. I didn't. But wearing really cute outfits that Stitch Fix sends me, that they, they always send something that I never would have picked. I have been postponing my next shipments because I, I, I am the same size as I've been and I have plenty of clothes and, and I don't leave the house that much for obvious reasons. But anyway, yeah, clothes are a very big deal. Gray's Custom Trim, keto bars that have 28 grams of carbs but only three net carbs per bar. Then people wonder why keto doesn't work for them when they have two or three of those snacks per day. Exactly. Don't blame keto for what the so-called keto products did. Almost guaranteed. If, if a packaged food product has the word keto printed on it, it's not good for you. It's not going to help. Just eat 
good food. All, all you do is lay off the carbs. Don't blame keto for what the net carbs did. I don't care how cute Rob Lowe is. Don't let him suck you into drinking Atkins shakes in bars. He's really cute. But that's okay. I'm right cute myself. And I say don't do it. Um, Linda Nelson writes, do you have a meter to check blood sugars? I think I should get one. Yes, I started out using the Precision Extra. The glucose strips, glucose test strips were not expensive. The ketone testing strips were expensive, but a product called Keto Mojo came out. If you go to my blog, it's, you know, it, you can buy it from the link in the sidebar. And I think you get a 15% discount for that. Um, and I get, it's an affiliate link, but you don't need to test. You don't need to test, but the strips are much more exp um, inexpensive. So yeah, you don't need to test. You can pretty much tell. I mean, if you follow low carb, your blood sugar is going to come down. As a matter of fact, if you are on medications for blood sugar, you need to do this under doctor supervision because if you start straight off, your blood sugar may drop precipitously, which can be a dangerous thing. As Dr. Westman says, it, it makes the medicine too strong. So be careful. You don't need to test. I test occasionally. If something's just up. If I just, you know, depending on the way I feel, some, let's face it, some days we just feel kind of logy for no real reason. I don't eat carbs. I mean, seriously. I occasionally have like cabbage in either a, a cooked meal or chopped up. Occasionally asparagus when we have it, but we, I just don't eat that many vegetables. What I do eat is poultry, eggs, bacon, sausage, beef, pork, lamb, fish and seafood, and cheese. So, yes, the Keto Mojo is what I would recommend. I like the device itself a little bit more. It has a couple of improvements over the Precision Extra, in my opinion. And the strips, I think you can get, they're 99 cents for life. Whereas the Precision Extra, they were like $5 at one time. I don't know if they've come down or not. Hey, Helena, I'm so happy to see you. Helena writes, I was able to stop all my diabetes meds within three to four weeks of starting keto. And Helena is a nurse. She knows what she's talking about. How are you feeling, Helena? Are you, are you well? Um... Okay, I'm looking to see. Anything else? Are we still connected? A couple of times, the connection is just gone. So the, everything stops and I don't realize it until I, one time I was actually talked for 10 minutes to nobody because the connection had been dropped. To reiterate, listen to the voice or the message or the messenger or the book or whatever that makes sense to you that resonates with you and then step away. You will guaranteed be able to find 10 contradictions to everything you've just learned. Okay, I've learned this and this makes sense to me. Good. You do a little bit more searching. You will find slick documentaries. You will find highly produced YouTube videos. You will find websites that sell you things that are supposedly going to kickstart ketosis. You know, you know what kickstart ketosis? Laying off the carbs. Nothing you consume is going to kickstart ketosis. You might get a positive reading if you down a bunch of exogenous ketones or MCT oil, but that's just because they go through your system and come out your pee. Just lay off the carbs. That's it. Lay off the carbs. I do want to, a couple of things. I'm going to put a couple of links here that people might be interested in. So bear with me if you don't mind. Um, one is Wednesday Wine Day, Wine Day with Amy Berger. That is a voice to listen to. Amy Berger, if you don't already know her, which you probably do. Um, Amy Berger, the Alzheimer's antidote. 
uh, The Stall Slayer. She just published that book. Super smart and a friend of mine. I mean, she was super smart. And then we became friends. I mean, we just happened to meet because we're kind of in the same area together. I mean, the field. And um, so we've become friends and we started Wednesday Wine Day. So once a month, third Wednesday of the month, Crowdcast, it's a registered um, live stream. And she and I are on screen and people bring their beverages or not. And we just kind of cut up and have a good time. There's no agenda. People can ask questions in advance. And um, let me see. And I know Debbie Doctor says it's her favorite Wednesday of the month. So there's a link to that. And then I want to provide a link to Dr. Westman's Keto Retreat. 2021, January 2021. We're on for it. It's a small, limited registration in Beaufort, North Carolina at the Beaufort Hotel. Beaufort, North Carolina, not to be confused with Beaufort, South Carolina. We had one in January. It was a lot of fun. I'll be there. Amy will be there. Jackie Eberstein will be there. Jackie Eberstein is fantastic, by the way. I got to make friends with Jackie Eberstein. Who is luckier than I? No one. So, uh, and my patrons get a discount on the Dr. Westman's Keto Retreat, but you already know that if you're here. All righty, friends, pick your sources carefully. If it doesn't make sense to you, if someone has an agenda, hmm, if, if there's more product listings on someone's website than actual words. Hmm. So just remember, you don't need to purchase one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol. Not one thing. You don't need to buy page four. It's whole foods. Non-starchy vegetables limited to about a cup a day before cooking and leafy greens limited to maximum about two cups a day before cooking. Full fat dairy limited to a couple of ounces a day. You don't need to buy any pills. You don't need to load up on special electrolytes. Don't treat for symptoms you don't have. If you start to feel a little bit lightheaded or lethargic or pins and needles, it's not withdrawal from carbohydrate. It's almost certainly sodium that needs to be replenished because as we pass a lot of water, sodium goes with it and magnesium and potassium and calcium and all those can do. So just put a little salt under your tongue like ketogenic does and take a swig of water. The simplest explanations and um, cures are, are what the ketogenic protocol is all about. So find a source. Maybe you become a source for somebody. That's what's really great is when people say, oh, my my parents started this because they saw the change in me. My best friend of 40 years, and we've struggled with our weight together, saw this and we started and she's now doing it. You be can become a source. Just don't sell keto diet pills. I'd be so disappointed. Thank you, friends. Make it a great day. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. That's the hardest part for me. Continues to be and probably always will be. But that just because it's a challenge doesn't mean I can't do it. So I can and I will. Bye. Thanks a lot.